Facebook.com forward slash tried by fire. Look, somebody say tried by fire. Anybody in here ever been tried by fire? Amen. Anybody ever been burned by some fire? Everybody with a perm and a straightening comb. If you had a perm, that lie burns you if you left it on too long. And that straightening comb, you had to be very still. Amen. You couldn't watch cartoons while they were straightening that hair. Anybody ever had a little burn crust on the top of their ear? Yeah, burning hurts. Burning hurts. But burning, God tries us by fire so we don't end up in fire. Amen. Amen. Tries us through the fire during our lives so that we don't end up in fire during our deaths. Amen. Don't nobody in here want to go. Who wants to go to hell? Raise your hand. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I don't want to go to hell. And look at somebody else and say, I believe there is a hell. Yeah, because if you don't believe there's a hell, you go going to hell. Amen. Don't e- I'm going to put it on this message. Don't email me, call me. If you don't believe in hell, you in hell. That's where you're going. Amen. Because Jesus taught us that there is a hell. And none of us have the ability to change what Jesus said. And Jesus, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And then later on it said the word became flesh. So when you go against the word, you're going against Jesus. If you go against Jesus, you in hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Amen. And when you go against Jesus, I'm not even supposed to wish you well. The Bible tells me not to even bid you Godspeed if you're teaching erroneous doctrine against the word. So I can't wish you well. I can't put you in heaven. I can't say, oh, but you know, God. I can't say none of that. If you go against Christ, you're going to hell. Amen. I just want to get that straight because folks are confused. And the Bible said that if you wish somebody Godspeed that teaches erroneous doctrine, you're partaking in their iniquity. You are partaker of what they're doing and that'll land you in hell. So I don't have nothing good to say about a person that changes the word of God for their own benefit. Sorry. Can't wish you well. Amen. Tried by fire. I'd rather be tried by fire now than burned by fire later. Amen. Because hell is 100% real according to the Bible. And this is why they, you know, I talk about it, I talked about it in part 14, but this is why they don't believe, some don't believe the Genesis 6 account of the sons of God coming down into the daughters of men, creating the demons and all of that. They don't believe that doctrine and they prefer the sons of Seth understanding of it because it makes it, it takes hell away because God punished those angels in everlasting chains of darkness. Under the heel of the earth, which is Shoal or Tartarus, Hades, in hell. Then the Bible says that pit will be opened up during the fifth trumpet where the smoke will ascend out and then those sons will be released. But what do you learn from all that? There is a hell. (laughs) There is a hell. They don't want there to be no hell. So look at somebody and say, I don't want to go to hell. And why am I messing with hell? Won't I just live right, be right, and do right? And when I stumble and fall, won't I just ask God to forgive me? Why do I change the rules and move the goalposts so I can score conveniently? No, I recognize I was wrong, and I got to repent. But I want to repent now. Because later it's too late. You can't repent after you die. Amen. 
Amen. So I'm repenting now. Amen. Because I want to go to heaven. Amen. I got a whole video about hell. Part 12. Truth behind hip hop. It'll tell you where hell is. Hell is real. And folks are going. Amen. At this precise moment, somebody is headed for a burning hell. Amen. But look at somebody and say, not me. Amen. I'm going to heaven. And I believe there's a hell. That's why I'm going to heaven. There ain't but two places you're going to go. Amen. You're not going to transcend into consciousness. Well, let me take that back. Yes, you are. You're going to leave your body and transcend because consciousness is just your mind. Your mind's going to be alive, but your mind's going to be in torment. The Bible said that the rich man, when he died, he went to hell being in torment. Amen. Your consciousness is you. That's what you feel. Your body's just a house for your mind. Amen. 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 You better act right. You better believe the right thing. Hey, that's what you better do. And you better be careful because you're going to get to Googling and you're going to stumble up on some erroneous doctrine. That stuff will attach to you like a bad cold. Make you sick spiritually. And then you, now you're searching to justify it. And you've changed what God's word has said. Amen. Amen. Tried by fire. Three things that the fire is going to test. All three of these things will be tested in your life. The first one, your works will be tried. The things that you're doing, they're going to be tried by fire. Your beliefs will be tried by fire. And then your love will be tried. Amen? Amen. We're going to talk about all three of these. It's, it's not going to take me long. Woo, that looks hot. I can't be in that forever. That looks hot. And that's just our fire. That's the refiner's fire. That's melted gold. The pot can barely hold it. And you know hell is God's imagination. Amen. Now what kind of God would create hell? The God of the Bible. Same God that killed folks at will. Oh, y'all ain't going to worship me? Die. Bam. See, he's the God that created them. Amen. That's like you standing up in your house. Oh, oh, oh. Ain't nobody going to. Oh, none of these kids. None of y'all going to listen to me? Y'all ain't going to pay no attention? Y'all ain't going to do what I said? What? In my house? I'm paying the bills? This my. You ain't going to what? Somebody getting. Just. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. What? You going to what? In my house, you gonna do that in my house? You gonna disrespect me? I beat you till you don't have no skin on your tail. In my house. So what we questioning God for? God is like, I brought you out of Egypt, and y'all gonna build a false god? You gonna worship? You gonna listen to Dathan and Coram, Korah and Abiram? Standing in front of the holy place and they're going to try to tell y'all something different? You're not going to listen to the one I selected but you're going to listen to those rejects? God said, everybody that's with the Lord, y'all better back up. Because I'm about to open up the ground and swallow some Negroes up because you know they was Negroes. Part 14 tells us they was Negroes. I'm going to swallow some Negroes up. Yeah, the Bible said the ground. God, see, that's that, because we belong to God, he can do whatever. He's not answering to our emotions. That's why it's so demonic for you to listen to somebody changing the Bible because of how they feel. 
well, my homosexuality, I just feel like I ought to be able to exist with it. Well, God said you can't. Well, well, well my adultery, I, you know, I ought to be able to have a wife and a girlfriend. No, God said you can't. Well, I ought to be able to steal a little bit when I'm really hungry. No, the Bible says you can't. God said it. And if he's the creator, then he has the right. Not only the right to tell us what to do, but to chastise us when we don't do what we're supposed to do. And if you don't live like he wanted you to live, now listen. Y'all sit down, sit down. His son. He gave his only begotten son to die. They spit on him. Beat him. I mean, hit him, flogged him, pulled the skin off his body. God is watching this. So he's like, man, look what my son is going through for these people. Boy, they better accept him. They better accept him. Because they don't accept him. Worse than this is going to happen to them. Now, that's just a father. That's a just father. And that's who God is. So we can't change it because of what we want to do. And there's a, here's the thing. If you get before God and find out why you're doing what you want to do, then you'll understand you're just reacting to something that happened to you. That wasn't ever God's will in the first place. You wasn't born gay. No, something happened to you. So the church, as the church, we stand on what's true. So we can help people out of what happened to them. And let me get to these slides. I'm hot. I got to take this jacket off. As believers, we are required by God to do good works. Amen? We're required by God to be good. Be good. Look at somebody and say, be good. When we're not good, we're not doing it God's way. So we got to repent for not being good. Amen. Just say it to yourself, Lord, forgive me for not being good when I should have been good. Yeah. Because we all have not been good at some point. But we're required by God to do good works. Be a good person. Goodness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Look at somebody and say, be good. Hey Amen. You know there's times you're not good. Somebody cuts you off on the freeway. You got to repent. Oh, Lord. Forgive the words that was coming out of my mouth. And, you know, after you've been saved for a while, you ought to stop slipping up and cussing. If you're still slipping up and cussing, you ain't saved enough. You need to get saver. Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so men should see your good works are men seeing your good works are they seeing you do good are they seeing you be good let your light shine amen our works will be tested and tried by God to show whether they were done to please him or ourselves yeah the fire comes to test you that's why you don't pray after you make decisions you pray before you make the decisions you pray before you launch your internet ministry you pray before amen before you say I do uh oh you pray before you go on a date Amen. You pray before you make life altering decisions. Don't try to stamp God on what you want to do. Because when trials and testing come, when the fire comes for your decision, it's going to burn up the stuff you want it to do. 
Amen. Proverbs 17 and 3. The fining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord trieth the hearts. He tries your heart. Amen. And he tries your heart to put you. He allows you to go through certain things to try your heart. To make sure you're doing what you're doing for the right reason. Amen. We must make sure that everything we do is done for the right reasons. No matter what your occupation is, you need to be doing it for the right reason. Amen. Somebody like, well, I hate my job. Well, then you got the wrong job. Wait a minute, Pastor. Now, we ain't supposed to like everything we do. Yeah, you are. If your job is going to help somebody, you got to look at it in terms of what I'm doing is going to benefit somebody. And that's a reason to do it and a reason to enjoy it. And see, I can't get no claps. Somebody's like, I've been working at Bojangles. This chicken ain't helping nobody. Man, there's hungry folks want that Bojangles. I don't know. I saw a Bojangle bag in my office, so that's why I said Bojangles. Amen. We must make sure that everything we do is done for the right reasons. So many today do things for notoriety, fame, money, or other selfish motives. That internet, boy. Woo! Folk do stuff just for fame. Mess their whole life up. Just for money. But only what we do for Christ will survive God's testing. Amen? Amen. Colossians 3 and 2 says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Somebody's like, well, I got affections for things. No, you don't understand. It's saying don't set your heart on things. Don't fall in love with this world. Amen. Fall in love with the things that God loves. Amen. You should have graduated from listening to secular music by now. Oh, but pastor, I got to have my Micah Jackson. No, oh, that one song he got. Well, are you still there? You set your affections on things on the earth. Why is, why is man in the mirror ministering to you like that? Amen. It's a spirit behind that that's connecting with your old carnal spirit. That's what's making these gospel artists just, you know, they don't just completely suck. Somebody was showing me the tour that them Clark sisters and stuff is on. I, I was, uh, every gospel song they do, they got to add a secular song mixed in with it. Now, what is that? Y'all 60. How you 60? Get up off your feet and that's you get better. doing that you, you you really gonna do that you you really gonna do that live in concert in front of a bunch of church folks Kurt dancing in a suit with no shirt what happened to the sh- when you start wearing double breasted suits with no shirt under why your chest out on a gospel song gyrating and just go what? snapping and doing no shirt on. Where your shirt? to it. Y'all got used to it. It don't bother you no more. That ought to bother you. Your husband
husband walk in your house and it all like that, you'd be like, oh God, well, let's put the kids to sleep. It's on and cracking. It's cracking. Crack a locking like cracklings. You know that's what that means. That's what it means. Every time he pop, you go, oh, oh, oh. Don't do that. And you singing a gospel, a, a song unto the Lord. Find that in the Bible. Find the minstrel that got up and gyrated and shook his booty to God's word. Find it in the Bible. I can find what I'm doing. Can you find what you're doing? Being a husband for Vada, can you find what you're doing being a preacher of the gospel? Can you find what you're doing helping the young, not despising their youth? I can find it, but I can't find that. Not in the Bible. That means something's wrong with it. And you paying a hundred dollars to see it. Man, I didn't mean to go all the way here. But it's the truth. Amen. I don't want my kids seeing that. I want my teenage boy in there looking at that. Amen. What we believe is coming under fire every day. Is that the truth? We must make sure we really, man, y'all got to quit watching all these clips that just pop up. Somebody sent me a clip that popped up saying, yo, Pastor, yo, you might be shortening your life. How? By, 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 by having birthday parties. The reason for birthday parties is to, to, so that you will note the year that you've become that makes us get older faster. And I mean, this dude had it like, it looked like a real message. And see what they did. When you blow out the candles, you're blowing your soul. It's your soul that put the candle out. <laughs> it's all on the internet because people want likes and views and you watching it. Oh, y'all, we can't have birthdays no more. I want 55 candles on my cake. People crazy. People crazy. That's what you worried about. People out here dying in their sin and you worried about blowing out a birthday cake. You done made a whole video. The dangers of birthdays. <laughs> What we believe is coming under fire every day. We must make sure we really know what we know and believe what we know. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe what? Okay, so if you believe that he is, that means you believe all of his word. Because he is his word. Oh, everybody not clapping. Amen. I don't need nobody taking the Bible. I, I don't need extra books, extra biblical sources. I can take the Bible as it is and get to heaven. I can take the Bible just like it's written and avoid hell. Need nobody coming up with a new thing. Oh, this new thing. See, with the, with the church, where the church missed it. What? You going to speak for the whole church? I hate when people do that. I'm apologizing on behalf of the body of Christ. You ain't the body of Christ. You're not even in it. Shut up. No, I can take the Bible and read it just like it's written. I don't need the Greek Bible, the Hebrew Bible. I don't need the Septuagint. I don't need any other translations. I don't need any other commentators. 
I can take the Bible like it's written and get to heaven. I can take the Bible like it's written and help you. I can preach a sermon every week of the year out of the Bible. But you better know what you know and quit listening to this bull coin on the internet. Dude, start ministries and God have them called them. It takes a calling from God to be able to see into the living word. Amen. So what? What you saying? I can't read it. Yeah, you can read it, but it's living. There's parts of it that need to be decoded by those God has called to decode it. He made it like that on purpose so that you will listen to authorities and wouldn't try to raise up no fakes and phonies. So, what we believe is not proven with extent studying or submerging in the word all day, every day. That's not how you prove what you believe. The belief has to register here. You got to have an experience. Sure, we should read the word, reflect on the messages and give time to God. But this doesn't prove that we fully believe. Who was with Jesus the whole time he was here? Judas. Mark 14 says, in Judas, one of the 12 went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. He was with the word the whole time and still didn't believe. He cast out devils and healed the sick. That's why the Bible said everyone that says Lord, Lord is not going to enter in. You're going to say that day, didn't I cast out devils? Didn't I heal the sick? Didn't I do these things in your name? He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you because you really didn't know me. Can I preach in here? Yeah. Our belief is based on our born again experience. Knowing that God is real and denying our own desires secures our absolute and solidifies our belief. You know when someone has had a born again experience because then they can deny what they want to do for him. See, a born again spirit, a, a born again experience makes you put yourself to the side and deny your own flesh for what God wants. person without a born-again experience is not going to deny themselves. They're going to do what they want to do and then change what the word said about it instead of letting the word change what they want to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. The born-again experience secures our absolute and solidifies our belief. So when testing comes, we are able to pass no matter which scriptures we have memorized. So we can pass these tests and have that absolute decided in our hearts. I'm not bending off of this. I'm not changing. No, and if I'm wrong, I'm repenting. I'm not changing the word. I'm going to repent and change me. Because the word is right. First Peter 1 and 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire might be found under praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And then, oh, our love is going to be tested. The fire of emotions comes to disturb our peace and test our love for one another. Your emotions will do this. God tests our spiritual walk by how we get along with one another. Amen. Don't come telling me. And you hate your brother or sister. You got folks you rolling your eyes at in the church 
Rolling your eyes at them. Yeah, cussing under your breath. But oh, when the music started, yeah, you're the safest person in here on the outside. But God lets that fire come and test you. Bad stuff start happening. That's the fire. Bad stuff starts happening. God is forcing you to change something. I'll preach in here. Yeah, he's forcing you to change something. He ain't going to let you go out like that. He loves you too much. Amen. So that eye rolling will become, come here, girl. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'll take wrong. I was wrong. We got to get along. Amen. Let that fire get hot enough. Yeah. God, man, God will let the canker worm eat your bill money until you get it right with your brother or sister. Amen. Sickness will set in into your body. Your immune system will break down until you get it right with your brother and sister. He's testing your love. 1 John 4 and 20, if a man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a what? You're lying. You're lying. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? Where there is always an issue with people upsetting you, getting the best of you, provoking you, then the problem is you. That's simple. Hey man, I get before God, I'm the type. I get before God, is it me? And I just pray under my breath. I don't want the devil to hear it. I pray under my breath. Just let my wife come in here and tell me something. And I know when she come in here, you know what you need to stop doing. <laughs> but you got to be able to ask yourself. You got to humble yourself. Is it me? Amen. Everybody in here don't hate you. It's 800, look it up. It's 800 and something probably over here. Folk ain't thinking about you like that. That's you. Mm-hmm. Yep, come. pray for me, Pastor, because they coming for me again. Coming for you? And who is they? <laughs> and why are they coming for you? If they're coming for anybody, it ought to be me. I'm the one upsetting them. Well, the word is upsetting them, but I'm preaching it. I understand that, but you? (laughs) You are failing the love test. And God is not going to let you keep failing. He's not going to let you continue to fail the love test. Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 10, cast out the scorner and the contention shall go out. Yeah. So if they're always coming for you, if we put you out, nobody be coming for nobody. It'll cease. There's always a problem with you. Always a problem. You always got to, hey, if we cast you out, strife and reproach will cease. It'll be howdy, howdy and never goodbye. (laughs) <laughs> amen some folks just need a little self awareness we must be able to live above our issues and not be provoked to wrath by those in our fellowship amen nobody in here should make you that upset let the world make you upset let the trials and tribulations of earth do that but people in here aren't supposed to make you upset we're supposed to look, look at somebody and say we're, we're supposed to love each other in here You ain't going to have that church with an old mother sitting over here and an old mother sitting over there staring each other down through the whole service. I've been in them kind of services. It's like a laser beam going across. If the pastor crossed it, he might get burned. They mean mugging, and it's years of that. Years because they old. They've been doing it for years. And you know what happens in churches like that? All the members gone, just them. 
sitting, still sitting across from each other. Ran everybody, everybody done, done ran into that beam and got. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that here. Amen. We're going to love each other. I don't care how your mama raised you. I'm going to love you. We must be able to live above our issues and not be provoked to wrath by those in our fellowship. If we cannot get along in a fellowship, then how do we expect to dwell together eternally in heaven? Amen. Romans 14 and 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. Amen. Summary. Yes. I love these short sermons. Amen. But I'm getting my point across, right? Amen. Amen. This is what we, God is testing us with fire in all three areas. We got to pass these tests. Amen. Some of y'all been here too long. Got to pass the test. Gold is purified through fire. When gold is placed in fire, all impurities are burned out. And all you have left is what? Pure gold. Pure gold. Amen. This is the same process of creating pure believers. God puts us in the fire, our works, our belief, and our love to remove, remove all impurities. Some of y'all are in the fire right now. And God is trying to burn the impurities out. Yeah. I just feel attacked. I just feel like the devil is. Out of no, 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 no. You're in the fire. And your reaction will tell how long you'll be in the fire. How you react to it. You got to pass these tests. He allows consequences to chastise us when we do works that are not pleasing to him. Or becoming of a believer. He allows pastors to disciple and admonish us. So that our beliefs can endure false teachers. False doctrines and compromise. God also allows life to happen to us. Has life ever happened to anybody? Just life. Pastor I need a word. I need you to explain this. Okay. Life. Life. But God will allow life to teach you stuff. Life will teach you. God allows life to happen to us to remove the issues that hinder our love for one another. See, when life happens, that's when you see that your life is really absent of love. When life happens, you need somebody. I need somebody. All these people I ran off, all these people I'm angry with, all these people I got an issue with, but now life has happened. I need a phone call. I need a hug. I need somebody to tell me it's going to be okay. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so God allows life to happen to remove the issues that hinder our love for one another. Amen. God is a refiner. He makes sure that we are who we are supposed to be by allowing trials and tribulations, testings and consequences to shape us into pure believers. Anybody want to be a pure believer? It will hurt and it will be painful, but it's for our own good. It don't hurt worse than hell. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. God wants to, no, he don't want to. God is going to get you out of your comfort zone. You're not going to be in here in the cut hiding. God's going to get you out of your comfort zone because your comfort zone was made up of the letdowns in your life. You put a limit on your own progress because of what people did to you. And God want to deliver you from that and pull that wrath and that anger out of your heart so you'll be open to love each other. Somebody not liking this message. Is it going too deep? Okay. Like, Pastor, get the shoe off my neck. <laughs> but he makes sure we are who we're supposed to be. That's God loving you enough to make sure you don't let this world overcome you. 
The quicker we surrender to God's process and begin to produce good works, strong beliefs, and unconditional love, then we can minimize the burns and enjoy being purified by him. Amen. Some of y'all been in the fire too long. Ain't much of you left. <laughs> Revelations 3 and 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. What is it saying? You think you really got it together. And God sees you as having none of it together. That's why you're in the fire. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried where? Yeah. So the earthly accolades, all the stuff you're seeking, God is saying, no, 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 no. Why don't you get the gold for me that's tried in the fire? That thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and the shame and that shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salves thou, that thou mayest see. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So this is why we can't take hell away. This is why we can't take God's anger away because he's going to rebuke and chasten us if he loves us. Amen. You spoil a child and don't give them any direction and give them everything they want and they're going to turn out terrible. But the loving father comes for you and he's coming with fire. He's coming with fire. So as soon as you go to complain and Lord, they, this, that, it is, he's put that fire on them. Put that fire on them and let that fire burn the impurities off. Amen. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold I stand at the door and knock and if any man hear my voice and open the door I'll come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Now to him that what? So what about the people that don't overcome? Where do they sit? In hell. Look, there is. The ones that can overcome, they get to sit with God in his throne with Christ. Even as I also overcame. He overcame the world. So we don't change God's word for the world. We overcome the world with God's word. He said, and I'm sit down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Everyone stand to your feet. Y'all believe the spirit spoke to the church today? Somebody said, you know this? I've been on fire for so long, I just... I need to get out of this one. And I want to pray for you that God will show you what he's trying to get out of you so that you can come out of this as pure gold. That testing that he's doing in your life, that fire that he's using in your life. If that's you, I want you to just come up and we're going to believe God. Believe God. I need all the bad things burned up. I need the bad works burned up. I need good works. I need good, strong faith. And most importantly, I need to love right. I need to love right. I need to love right. Hallelujah. 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 You got to know what you know. Believe what you believe. 
Stand strong on it in this last time. This is the last and evil days. Got to stand firm. Got to stand firm. We got to stand firm. Stand firm. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this message and thank you, Father God, for loving us. Not as an earthly father, but as our heavenly father. Loving us enough to chastise us, to chasten us, to come after us, to make sure we do better, to not allow us to live in mediocrity, to not allow us to be lukewarm. Even this passage I read is from the church of Laodicea when you were telling them to not be lukewarm. So, Father God, we don't want to be lukewarm. We don't want to be half Christians. We don't want to be saved in front of everybody else. We don't want to just be saved at church. And then when our beliefs are tested, we don't know what we understand. Father God, we don't want to be part-time Christians where when things are going good we speaking in tongues but when things go bad we hating our brother and our sister blaming our parents blaming our husbands or wives Father we want to be consistent believers and if that is what this fire is then let it burn out all impurities let it burn them until they are erased so that we can come out as pure gold, qualified to sit with you in your throne, qualified to be in heaven and not hell. Father God, continue to work on us in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands up. Let the fire of your Holy Ghost fall on me. Let the fire, the testing fire, the trying fire burn all impurities out so that we will come out as pure gold in the name of Jesus. God, we yield to you for this testing. We yield to you for the chastening. We yield to you so we can be better. Our world's not crashing down around us. Our lives are not destroyed. This is just to make us better. To make us better. So we'll endure until the end. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the power of God in here. I feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and hug somebody and say, he's making you better. He's making you better. Amen. Hug somebody you don't know and tell them he's making you better. I know it seems like the worst time in your life. Man, when you're in it, it can feel so terrible. But God is making you better. He's making you better. He's making you better. Hallelujah. 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 He's making you better. He's making you better.